Big Bing's Break Room Podcast, what it do? Uh, today is Thursday. Hey, real quick, off the top, somebody, I got an email. Somebody um, asked me about the intro music for the show. You know, what we doing? What we doing? I'll be in the break room. So that's how I got Epic. They thought it was a real song. They're like, where can I download that song? I was like, wow. So that's how I got Epic, uh, who's an artist himself and an engineer and a producer. But he did that particular uh, beat exclusively for the podcast. So we're going to make that available on the on the, on the the website real soon so people can download it and take it with you. Because the beat do go hard. It kind of remind me of that song. I, mean, I don't know how versed you are with music, but that boy Jacquees got a song called In the Club that was hot maybe about almost two years ago. And um, that's what that song remind me of. But But thank you so much for the email. I mean, you can email us too. You have questions about the show, about Media Room 360, um, just holler at us. It's that simple. Um, download the app. It's real simple. Go to Media Room 360, Google, download it, and we good to go. Action. Be 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 before we really get started with the show, I gotta talk to you about something. Can I pull action? Oh, there you go. What's up, man? You all right? Yeah, man, I'm good. I just I just want to tell everybody, I get all the hate mail though. Okay. I get yeah. all the hate mail. <laughs> yeah, any, any any hate mail, anything you don't like, you send it to action. But you know, from time to time, we end up in conversations where we end up talking about this right here. This brand yeah. that was out years ago. Bam, and bam, bam. I went and, and found my hoodie. Uh, I thought I had left it somewhere, but I found it. But Starberry, who played in the NBA, Stephon Marbury, Georgia Tech graduate, uh, played in the NBA for a couple of seasons, ended up leaving the league and going to Japan. But what he did uh, for his fans, uh, basically for the African-American culture, he made gear for everybody and he made it affordable. Everything that he made from the shoes to the jeans to the hoodies to the to the to the jeans, he had jeans was eight dollars and sixty eight cents. And nobody yeah. supported it. No, I take that back. Me and you supported it because you got the same yeah. one. Got. <laughs> yeah, but same one. It was good for a couple of, I don't know, maybe a year or two or maybe a couple of months. And then it just kind of faded out. It couldn't compete with the Jordans. And I don't know who else yeah. was hot in, the, hot in the league at that time. The Jason Kids and the uh, LeBron was just coming out. Melo was hot back then. But I just, I just hated that we didn't. We didn't support that, that movement. Yeah. Uh, the, the, we, the store we that it was sold out. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And, 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 to, and to your point, we still <laughs> got it, and the material is still good. It hasn't shrunk. Yeah. This do better than some of my Nike hoodies. You know, this do better <laughs> than, than, than all the other stuff that I had. Sean, you had some Starberry stuff. Blasphemy. Too, Blasphemy. I had, <laughs> I had a lot of Starberry stuff, and at the time, that's when I was um, – married so i had my stepson so yeah we, we would hit up steve and barry all the time steve and yeah. barry that and was barry. the name but i'm yeah. just saying that that whole thing was it was beautiful man but we didn't support it i mean that should have been like the number one number one shoe or number one brand could have been as big as fubu could have been as big as carl Kanai, south pole echo nyc like all of south pole that's it south pole right? and, 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 yeah pole. and see here's the thing though it's like they were so reasonable and so affordable to get that you got so many of them <laughs> that I I had I couldn't even go through the rotation half the time. You know, mm -hmm. I still have like brand new shoes and boxes sitting in my closet because every week 
<laughs> he come out with something new or uh -huh. every, every they put out something new and you'd be like, oh, I got to get those. And yeah. he's like, man, I had so many Starberry shoes, hoodies, hats, sweatsuits. <laughs> Sure. I, think, I think about that all the time, man. Shout out big Frank Harris that just checked in. What's up, baby? Love you, Frank. But I, I think about that all the time. We'd rather spend $690 on some Jordans than go buy eight, nine, ten pairs of J's for, you know, that'll last you a lifetime. Like, this this, this yeah. hoodie is from 02. It's still dope. It hasn't shrunk. The material is amazing. And all yeah. the other stuff got holes under the arms and all that stuff. So I'm just, <laughs> I, I, I just I just wanted to share that. Actually, Shani, how y'all doing, man? Good. Good. Thanks for Thursday. <laughs> it's Thursday. Thursday, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we were supposed yeah. to uh dive back into the um to the Trey Song stuff. We 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 talked about it. Yeah, it kind of left off there. We kind of we kind of left off there. Do do we got um, we don't have that video handy, do we? Um, no, no, no. We were supposed to look at that view from um from up top that they had on TMZ. Oh, Cicely Tyson died. No, yeah. just now. This like this. It started. Just see this. Oh my God, I'm speaking. It just come across the news. I, I take my phone. Let me check the phone. Yeah. Hey, sorry. This yeah, this, this is, is breaking this, news. It, it's now, live right 90, here. This she was ninety three. She was ninety three. He's ninety six. Oh my God. Oh wow. Yeah, um. Wow. What's the source? Um, what, say, what, what, um, um, TMZ. Yeah. Let's see. It doesn't say. Um, wow. Let's see. Um, let's see. What was wrong? Was yeah, TMZ probably just old age, but T uh, TMZ just hey, if TMZ got it, you know, it's it's pretty much is is they don't they don't get too much stuff wrong on TMZ. <laughs> they don't say they just say uh, she has died. We don't know what happened. Yeah. But wow, you know, I was expecting her to live to be like a hundred and six. Uh. Wow. Like Miss Pitt, like Miss Pittman when she played Miss Pittman. Yeah, Jane. Yeah, Pittman. I mean, well, every picture that we've seen of her, we haven't seen her sick or anything. She's yeah. always thriving, and I think yeah. like my grandmother. My grandmother's ninety-two. My grandfather was ninety-four. He would have been ninety-five, but he passed last year. Well, in our family, some of the women live to one hundred and three. 101, 102. Wow. Look good. Mm, so when I yeah. was sister, that's that's what I'm thinking. Like, oh, she doing good. And then to find out that she died, I oh, don't know. The world she just stopped. And I know she she received a couple of awards or something. They they gave yeah. they made sure they gave her, her flowers like in the last two years because I've seen her on a lot of stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, she still was working. I know um I think she was doing some Tyler stuff with Perry. Tyler, Tyler Perry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She was amazing. I mean, as an actress, she she's amazing. And, and for all you young kids out there, get your Google machines, <laughs> get yeah. them to working, and Google Cicely Tyson. Check out some of her movies. See what she did. See the work she put in. And and she's amazing. So uh, rest in power to her. And you know, those close to her, our prayers go out. She won wow. Emmys for lead actress in 1974 for the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman. Yeah. Um, yeah. The year before that, she was nominated for the Best Actress Oscar for a movie in um, Sounder. She started as Sounder a was good too. In New York City, um, she was on the covers of Ebony, Jet, Harper's Bazaar, and Vogue. Um, but they say that her mom was was not too pleased, telling her that she couldn't live in the family house if she pursued entertainment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Think about it. That's the fifties and the forties. Um, so yeah, I but, yeah, 60. but but still, it's like, can you imagine if she would have listened to her mom? I'm not saying, mm -hmm. not advocating that, <laughs> not advocating that. No, but you're 100 percent right. If she would have listened to her mom, we would have been robbed of a, a of a true artist. I just remember her in Roots. I remember her in Roots, yeah. and I remember her in the Richard Pryor movie when Richard Pryor was the bus driver. You know what I'm talking about? Um, it's not I'm which way is up. It's busting loose. It's busting loose. loose. And yeah. I remember her and uh, and Richard Pryor. Um, 
That was a funny movie, Bust and Loose. I remember they was on that bus, and that was amazing. Yeah. What's up, Dave? Hi, Dave. Dave's yeah. So, um, well, I mean, yeah, who I left? Who left, y'all? Let, let, let's go down the list because the other lady, um, I don't want to butcher her name, Cloris uh, Lee. Oh, God. She Lisa. passed away. Yes, her. Yeah, Lisa, yeah. I'm like, who is yeah. Yeah. And see, I don't even, I, I don't even know who she was. Like, I know she had a yeah. talk show, like before Down the Shore, like in the '60s, I think. She oh, had a talk course, show. Lisa. You know her. Yeah. 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 You know. What did yeah. she play? What, what did she play in? Uh, let's see. Uh, like I said, uh, I know she you, had a talk show. She was in Young. She was in Young Frankenstein. <laughs> I mean, she was, yeah, I mean, uh, Clara Sleeman. I mean, she she did a uh, she did a lot of older stuff. She she, but I mean, she was a great actress though. I mean, it, it, probably stuff before you because she's a, she's a, a lot older actress. Gotcha. Yeah, but I, I at least yeah. I would think I would know something. But you know, I was kind of surprised yeah. her name didn't ring a bell. But when we talk about the 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 older end of African American leaders, you know, I'm just thinking like. In the eighties and the nineties, I can't even name nobody. Mm -mm. Yeah, Ruby and Ozzy are gone. Um, the oldest actor that I can think of that we have left is Betty White, and then she just turned ninety nine. Betty White just turned ninety nine uh, on January something. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean we still got. Uh, I mean we got. Uh, uh, let's see. Mr. Um, Louis Farrakhan is eighty nine. I. Is it uh, uh, is it Billy D still around? Billy D still around? Billy D uh, is eighty. He eighty something. Yep. Uh, Louis Gossett Jr. still around? He's in his eighties too, I, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so we still got we still got we still got some great some great still walking around. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Is, Wonder. is, is Sydney Portier yeah. Doc? No, Stevie Wonder. I mean, uh, Sydney Portier is good. And uh, what's the yeah. Dale do? Dale Blair under not Blair Underwood. Um, <laughs> Harry Belafonte. <laughs> he's still he's still kicking yeah. it. I know he's yeah. ninety plus. Is he? <laughs> oh yeah, Harry Belafonte. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Frank. Frank Harris that. just co-signed it. Sydney Portier yeah. is still with us. Yeah. So I'm yeah. just saying, man. You know, I just think about you know what did, in the last couple of days, Hank Aaron, Clitoris. Oh, I'm sorry, Chloe. God. What's her name? Oh I'm, I'm, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you hear how y'all was butchered that though, Shiny? I know. I'm yeah, sorry. like I I'll apologize. Cloris Leachman. Cloris Leachman. <laughs> Cicely <Sarah> Tyson. <laughs> you know, and this just happened in case you're just tuning in. We just found out that uh legendary actress and activist, um, Cicely Tyson has just passed away. A uh, story just broke on TMZ.com. Uh, you heard it here on the break room, um, man. Condolences to, yeah. to all the families involved, and I mean, just the the trailblazer, the trail that she left for the Taraji P Hensons, for the Angela Bassett's, for the uh, yeah. what's the scandal girl name? What's the scandal girl name? Carrie <laughs> Carrie Washington. Carrie Washingtons of the world for the um, what's the girl that played in Crooklyn? Played in love and basketball, the mama. She was the mama in Crooklyn too. Oh, um, Allie, Allie, is it Allie? Eighty at uh. It starts with the A. I can't even. What is say her it. name? Alfrey Wooder. Alfrey Wooder, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, all of all of those um, all of those actresses, you know. Yeah. Cicely Tyson I mean, she, paved the way for all of them. She, she <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Frank. Frank's on point tonight. Uh, yeah, I mean, just just her, her body of work. Her her body of work is is very serious, and, and you know, again, just prayers out to the family. And, and it, you know, like me and Shawnee always talk about, man, time don't wait on nobody, and it's nobody's friend. And you know, <laughs> time is not your friend. It's nobody's friend, and and it, and it happens. Yeah, that's something that's just gonna keep on, keep on moving. That's crazy. Yeah. If you're just tuning in, you're checking out Big Bink's break room with me, Shawnee Scott, Big Bink to my left or right, whatever side that is. And below is Action <laughs> Jackson. And speaking of Action Jackson, we are getting ready for February 7th, and we definitely want you to be in the house with us at Top Golf, located at 8787. 
Park Lane in Dallas, Texas. We're going to hang out there from 12 to 3, and we are playing golf, swinging. What are they called? What the thing? Golf called? clubs. Golf, golf clubs. clubs. <laughs> golf club. We're going to swing golf clubs to hit golf balls so they can make it to the hole. Jackson <laughs> Jackson to get on that bicycle and ride 545 miles from San Francisco to Los Angeles, all in the name of raising awareness, raising funds, and finding a cure for HIV and AIDS. And we need yes. you there. So log on to the website below over there, actionsaidsride.com. If you can't come, you can definitely make a donation. Our goal is to raise $10,000 by next Sunday. And we know that you guys can help us with that. Okay. 10,000 by Bam. next Speak Sunday. Speak it. Speak it. Right. Speak that, girl. Speak I mean, that. If everybody we know donated a dollar, I got 5,000 on Facebook. Shiny, you got 5,000. Ash, you got 5,000. That's 15 off the WAP right there. Just in a per in a perfect world. In a perfect world. But in no, a perfect world. No amount is too small. No amount is too big. Give, give, give. Let's help Action Jackson set it off as we get ready for the big game on uh, February 7th. That's a Sunday. It's from 12 to 3, too. So you yeah. can bring yeah. your family. And this is the thing. This is the thing. This is what I don't want to happen. Now, I'm asking you to donate. I'm I'm asking you to donate. You lost which sound? You can't hear us, Mills? I'm asking yeah. you. What sound, donate. Mills? Yeah. <laughs> Mills said we lost the sound. What sound go? But I'm asking. I hear us. Yeah, I hear. Oh, hopefully. Yeah. One dollar. Can you, can you hear us out there? You know what? I can do this. I got it sitting right here. I don't know why I'm not thinking. Oh, yeah. I, I can hear us. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, I see. Cut your volume up, Bells. Yeah, yeah. A dollar <laughs> today. Just donate a dollar today. Today. Today is what? Thursday, January 28th, right? 20, yes. Yeah, 28th. 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 All so, day. If you don't donate a dollar today and then June 21st, you call me, Shawnee, I need some help because I just found out my brother got AIDS or something. I'm going to say, did you donate a dollar to Actions AIDS, right? Because y'all all know how to call me and ask me for help. So I'm asking you for help. And I've helped a lot of people even when yes. I did not have it to help. So I'm asking you for a dollar, a dollar. One dollar, four quarters. Can you just go to actionsaidsride.com, click on the link, donate a dollar, one dollar. And let me just tell you though, this girl right here <laughs> is putting in some work, okay? And it's not about me. It's, it's definitely not about me because I get nothing. I get zero cents. Actually, I come out of the pocket because I have to still pay for airfare. I still got to pay for hotels. I still got to pay for everything else when I do the AIDS rock. So none of this goes to me. All this funds that we raise goes to the people in Los Angeles and people in San Francisco for the AIDS life cycle, period, end of story. And it's a tax write-off, too. It's tax season. <laughs> it's a tax write-off. They are a 501c3. So it's like uh, you can get a tax write off just for doing this. And, and for all those big ballers out there, every big business needs a charitable donation. So if you own a business, if you run a business, you need a charitable donation. This is it. The perfect yeah. one for you. <laughs> and if you don't believe us, it, when you click on the link for AIDS life cycle, the phone number yeah. is there. You can call them and ask them if we lie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, but I've know, been doing it for 20 years, so I ain't got nothing. <laughs> it knows that we're not lying, but I'm gonna let action talk about him. What was that? Oh, uh, is he there? Is he there? We got everything ready to go. Mm -hmm. We got everything ready to go. Okay, so check this out though. We speaking of the AIDS life cycle, we speaking of the big swing at Top Golf. We want you there. So I had to put in a phone call to one of the participants, one of the celebrities that we will be having in the bay who needs no introduction, but we made him one anyway. <laughs> ah. I'll, I'll let it roll, and then we'll talk to him on the other side. Let's I get, hope let's, it's the right good. one. I'll
Big numbers. Big numbers. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. World, stop. That was dope. Got, before we bring up Nate, I am so sorry, but we got to clap it up for Action Jack. <laughs> he put that video together. Did you? <laughs> yes. I thought you did it. No, Action did. You know, I've been running like a chicken with my head because I was like, Action, girl, <laughs> stop. Give it up for Action Jackson on that production right there. That he did it all. Oh, we're gonna send you some more work, dog. All right, I, I know you're doing that. I'm sending you some more stuff. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Man, hold up. That's okay, how we do it. That's how we do it. Start rotating again. Go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, roll start rotating again. And bring my man in, big number 71. <laughs> there you go. I yeah, see you, strong. big boy. I see you. <laughs> What's going on, man? Appreciate that intro, man. Hey, I ain't gonna get good, man. <laughs> yeah, man, we're blushing, man. Hey. That's just for you. That's just for you. <laughs> hey, How y'all doing? Man. We hey, good, big bro. Up? I'm sorry, we ain't even greedy to because I'm just like, and all like, dang, action, <laughs> oh my god. Okay, all right. Hi, Nate. How are you doing? Thank you so much for being a part of Big Wings Break Room and being a part of Action Jackson Super Swing Golf Tournament. We really appreciate you for participating in this. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, it's a pleasure, honor. Um, been waiting to get out there, trying to knock off a little rust, man. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm super excited, man. Thanks for the opportunity. But people like what? Can you can you like kind of paint a picture of what life after football is like? I mean, people got this. They got this. Well, I was one of them. I got this thing like you know, y'all got these big old checks rolling in for the rest of your life. You chilling. You on the beach. You you kicking it. And you know, I mean, some people do philanthropy. Some people do other stuff. But you know. Do, do y'all still kick it like people use on a team with? Are y'all still cool? Do y'all still hang out? Like that whole thing, like just, just kind of share some light on life after football, man, if, if you don't mind. Well, that's a that's a good question, man, because when me and Action go play golf, you know, he like to show love to some Raiders, so I always got to, you, know, uh, you know, but, you know, look, there you go. <laughs> uh, being retired, for me, for me, I knew it was coming. Um, they kind of try to prepare you for that moment. Um, I knew when my body was um, had enough, um, you know, so I'm a father of five, married, uh, my college sweetheart, um, you know. Oh, so, y'all got five kids. Yeah, you had five. it, Mary. No, you ain't had no choice. All superstars. All superstars. <laughs> All you super play volleyball, right? Yeah, well, I have four daughters and one son, so my, oh, my yeah, daughter's you all. Over four girls. Yeah, you yeah, so, you know, my wife went <laughs> back at LSU. Um, she's 6'2", I'm 6'5", so, you know, we have tall children. Um, yeah. Grocery bills from this. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, ever since I retired, I just been into the kids, a uh, little bit of business, but trying to balance them all. Um, you know, cause every, everything needs a little time. Um, so that's just been my main thing, trying to stay busy, you know, um, and just share it amongst the kids, man, you know, not, not be too busy, you know, cause I value being a father, um, I value being a husband as well. So, you know, I got, I, I got my schedule full. So <laughs> that's dope, man. <laughs> He keeps it real. He keeps it real. This I, I met him. He was taking his daughter to practice. That's how real this dude is. All right? <laughs> I met him taking his daughter to practice. So we, him, him, his daughter and my daughter played on the same volleyball team, and that's how I met him. So you know he keeps it 100. He takes his daughter to practice. <laughs> and, you know, I, I mean, I, the way I roll, it was just different. You know, like um, it was different when I came from Cincinnati to Dallas. Cincinnati was a uh, blue collar town, you know, um, when I came to Dallas, it was like Hollywood out here, man. Um, you know, um, but I, I had to remain focused, man. Um, you know, wise man. Well, a fool learns from his own mistakes. A wise man learns from others, you know, so I had been heard about mm. cowboy players in the nineties and, you know, um, throughout. So, you know, I was just trying to, you know, keep it clean, you know, and then I have four daughters you know, I got <laughs> my oldest one. She was actually when I was playing, she was taking a tour of the facility. And, you know, so when a, her classmates seen my locker, you know, I mean, I got to stay clean. So, you know, um, yeah. I held up. 
In case you're just tuning in, this is Big Pink's Break Room Podcast. Um, this is where your opinion helps us strategically, strategically move the culture forward. Special guest, legend, you know, played for the Bengals off that Highway 70, nine, <laughs> played off that uh, th- 35 in Dallas, Texas for the Cowboys, uh, Nate yeah. Livings, who's going to be in person at Action Jackson's Super Swing Golf Tournament, which is uh, – on the seventh, about a week and a couple of days away, where you can uh, actually get your tickets and everything now at yeah. actionsagesride.com. Uh, a couple of people checking in early. Lucy, hey Lucy, and hi hey, Darren, Darren off um, out there in Indianapolis. What's up, big bro? Um, so, so Nate, man, COVID, man, we we probably in month ten or eleven right now. How how has that been? Cause you said you you still taking the girls to practice. I I got a daughter that do all star cheer. My son play football, little league football. But how are you navigating through COVID, man? Man, it's a great question. You know, I started coaching football this year at my daughter's high school. She just got to ninth grade, so you know, I'm I'm trying to um, squeeze as much time I, I possibly can um, from being around her. So I started coaching football, man, and it was a uh, it was a nervous time for me, man, because everybody was getting sick. You know, um, you know, the whole coaching staff got sick. You know, mm. did you get COVID? Oh man, I didn't get COVID. <laughs> it's all right if you did though, because I had yeah, it. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Man, look, I'm knocking on wood right now, man. Look. <laughs> hey, man. look, hey, straight up. I thought hey, I was feeling like that thing was chasing me, coach. Look, yeah. you know, we still out here in the field, right? But <laughs> Everybody around me was getting sick, man. My uh, my high school football coach, he passed away early 2020 from, from COVID, man. And that, that hit me in my chest, man. He meant a lot to me. Um, my mom passed away November 3rd from COVID. Um, that rocked my world. Um, you know, so I'm not one of those. I'm not one of the ones that take it for granted. You know, when my kids come in from practice, you know, um, I'm like, hey, you know, straight to the showers, straight to get yourself cleaned up. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? It's... Uh, you know, we with it's seven of us over here. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I got to keep that. You know, I got to keep that fungus away from here as much as I possibly can, man. And it's 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 been a scary situation, but you know, um, my buddy, uh, that's crazy. My buddy Andrew Whitworth, the left tackle from the Rams, caught it too. I forgot to. He his whole family caught it. Hey. He was going through that during the season, man. Mm. Um, you know, so man, it's you know. We just trying to, you know, keep the precautions, man. So, hey, let me ask you. So, if you were still playing, how would you would have navigated that in the season? Because how they had to play during the season and, and, and work their way around the season, how would you would have thought about that? Like having to play and deal with the COVID at the same time. <laughs> you know, I'd have, I'd have did it, but I'd have quarantined myself. I would, you know, that'd be that gave me <laughs> reason to stay away from the house. You know? <laughs> to stay away from your house well, yeah, yeah, so had if i had you know if he was playing I, NFL, he was playing. if i was playing you know i played offensive line so i'm you know i'm all in it all day so i'm at the end of the day i don't want to bring that home i'd rather i'll corn i stay at a hotel while the season going on long as i'm around in that environment you know, and I'm consistently testing all the time too. So, uh, but you know, that's something I wouldn't want to bring bring home to the fam. So, okay. So, if 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 it was like that, and let's say you were playing, and some of your teammates tested positive, would you walk away? Like, if you were still playing, would you say, you know what, I'm gonna get this up because I want to be with my family? Man, you know, I'm on Big Bing. I'm on Big Bing's break room, so I'm a I'm gonna keep it real. One hundred. Yeah. When I played, I was. You know, I was going to get the money, you know, because <laughs> I came in the door on practice squad. I came in undrafted. You know what I'm saying? So I came through. I got it out the mud, per se. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I was going to take proper precautions, but, you know, I'm going because at the end of the day, you know, I was getting paid, you know, fifteen hundred dollars a snap. You know what I'm saying? Like, you miss <laughs> no snap. was a snap. Every play the ball is snap, I make fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm to, snap, but no, when that's they a, say height, when they say height, 
Okay. Look, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a great question, man. Because because here's my here's my thing too. What 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 makes me um what unsettles me about the NFL is because you say you value the players. Yeah. If you value the players, concussion protocol says you out two weeks. Pat Mahomes wasn't out two weeks. I understand yeah. Pat Mahomes make a half a billion dollars. I understand if Pat Mahomes don't play, KC don't go to the Super Bowl. Right. Super Bowl. Yeah. 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 So what is this about? Is this about caring about the players or is it about caring about that dollar? But that's a and, whole nother discussion. Yeah, yeah and you yeah. know what? And I know we're supposed to talk about some other things, but since I got a football player here, I got to <laughs> And we don't do it, and I promise I'm not going to stay on it too long. I'm going to respect your time. But I, I've looked at sports and football in particular as a, a plantation because I'm, I'm I'm seeing these players go out and they play, <laughs> and, they play, and, they play and then the people make all this money off of it. And like you said, well, I got $1,500 a snap. Well, if you get fifteen hundred dollars a snap, I, and I understand that you know the pyramid thing, somebody has to be at the top making most of the money. But do you guys ever feel that way? Like you know what? Here I'm giving my body, I'm giving my time. I could come out of this um, with the injury that could affect how I interact with my family, with my kids. They should do more. Can you can you answer that question first? If you can't, don't. But. Is that a conversation that you guys have? Man, this should have been, we should have, this locker room conversation. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's different, you know, it's all about how you, you know, it's all about how you come up. Um, you know, I just, you know, it's just all about how you come up. You know, I mean, do you all feel like y'all have to do it? Or do, do you feel like you don't have any so other I, Put it like this. Put it like this. Show me another place in the in America. I can come out of college making over a hundred thousand dollars with or without a degree. Mm. Show me another place in America where I can come out of college with or without a degree and make a hundred thousand dollars on practice squad. Now, if I got drafted. I changed the lives yeah. of generations of generations. Yeah. Now, here's the other part. When I get drafted, who's my agent? Yeah. Who's in charge of my finances? Now, that's a whole nother discussion. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, my mama been living. I've been living in Section 8 rent houses all my life. Yeah. I've been eating fried pork chops and macaroni and cheese and weenie. And that's a deluxe meal in my house. Didn't have a beef. <laughs> You know, I had to. I, you know, sometime when my water got turned off, I had to go to the neighbor's house and fill up a gumbo, a gumbo pot, and bring it back over and put it on the stove so I can have a hot bath. Like when you come from those situations, those those hunger moments make you go out and grind for it, and make you, by any means necessary, you're gonna go get it. Yeah. That's interesting. Bam. That's Bam. interesting. I'll put, I'll put you on that though. I'm with you on that though. Because yeah, watch, this, watch this. Watch this. I'm going to make it clear for you. But when I came from Cincinnati to Dallas and they told me I had to go to Jerry Land and meet Jerry at his, uh, at his, uh, at his suite, I had to go meet Jerry in his suite. I got there like 15 minutes before Jerry got there. You know, Jerry, you keep his security with him. So when he walked in the doors, his security man was with him. You know, and I, you know, I looked him in his big blue eyes. He started talking that cowboy talk. And he stretched my arm out. Let me see how, how long your arm is. Started sizing me up. Let me let me see what I'm in his head. Let me see what I'm making my investment on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm not ignorant to it, but it's how you position yourself. See, I was born and raised in Louisiana. You can't walk around and say certain things because what? You give up your cup. I graduated from LSU. I had to go learn how to speak Caucasian in this world. You, you got to understand where you're at. I mean, I get yeah. that. You got to understand how many kids I had to see. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you, know you got to understand how many kids still eat. And I've yeah. been five over seven years. Yeah. yeah. Just did. say it was supposed to be five. So that's a <laughs> Yeah. I, I get it. I mean, I wasn't born with no silver spoon for sure. And as a single mom, I have to make it work. But 
that like where I'm about to go, we not gonna go because that's a whole nother show. That's a, and I'm down for that show. And yeah, we can do that later. So, <laughs> this is what we need to do now. Just in case you're tuning in, you you checking out Big Bing's break room with Big Bink, Shawnee Scott, Action Jackson, and our guest Nate Living of the Dallas Cowboys. Well, former player of Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. But you play for another team. What's well, cowboy? Always a cowboy. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Cincinnati <laughs> Bengals. Show up to the Bengals. Bengals. Um, yeah. He's joining us February seventh at um, Actions, Actions Jackson's Action Jackson Super Swing Golf Tournament at Top Golf, <laughs> eighty-seven, eighty-seven Park Lane in Dallas, Texas. He is one of the team captains. So if you want to play on his team, what you need to do is log on to Actions agedride.com right now and get registered and you can play with a cowboy. I know we got all them cowboy fans out there so you'll get to yeah. talk. Uh, but we are. Uh, COVID, COVID rules are in place so you can't get up in his face. Yeah, yeah. And it, 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 it's, uh, it's going to be limited. And let me just say <laughs> let me just say about this guy though right here. No, like soon as we start uh, brainstorming this event and start thinking about doing this stuff for the AIDS Life Cycle trying to raise money for the charity and then we came up with the idea, the concept. Shani came up with all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, let's do that. And then we thought, OK, let's get some celebrities in the band. And I called him up. And the, the first thing he going to say to me is like, what you need? <laughs> like, I said, I, I got this event. He's like, what you need? I mean, this is the heart this man has. I mean, just big. Uh, it's, it's about giving, about giving back, about being in the community. and and. I'm not going to let you escape <laughs> without talking about your children's book because this dude wrote a book <laughs> for, yeah, for yeah. children. So he's an author, too. So he's not just some crazy, dumb jock athlete. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. and, uh, that sounds far, like far from a stereotype. Book. Yeah, it is a stereotype because that's, that's, how, that's how people play you and you know it's true. The people like the jocks are dumb. They're dumb. They get they skate through college and they don't they, no dude LSU wrote a book got his own businesses making moves and 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 he's taking the time out to help me out so you guys help out as well. <laughs> yeah, um, I, you know I understood I had to graduate uh, from college. If I graduate from LSU, I can kind of you know um, get a little head start in this world. Um, you know, and I never wanted to be labeled as the dumb jock. You know, because I you know it's so many so many uh, of them, you know, and I, I try to teach my kids to uh, not to be average, not just in sports, but in academics, not to be average because um, there's enough average people out there. I define average as doing enough just to get by. So everybody else, that's my definition of average. When I, it's so many people just want to do enough just to get by. Oh, I made it through. No, you know, so um, that's kind of, uh, been my approach even since I retired. You know, I wrote a children's book, um, you know, because I noticed there was a need for it. You know, um, you know, pretty much the schools that I go into in Texas and, and, and throughout the country, you know, I walk in there. If I say that I play with the Dallas Cowboys, they pretty much roll the, the red carpet out for me. And so I take advantage of it by not spending time talking about sports, but spending time with the kids talking about the importance of education and uh, academics and you know putting the joysticks down and, and picking up books and uh and growing mentally um so that's and that's my thing you know and you mentioned that you you know single parent mom a lot of these schools that i go in um have single parent children you know that don't know how to handle themselves in in, in um in classrooms don't you know don't want nothing to do with school I got a story behind that too. When I signed to go to college, I wasn't eligible. Nick Saban came from Michigan State to LSU and he came to visit me in my high school and he sold me my transcript. He said, Nate, I got a scholarship for you, but you got a 1.7 GPA. You don't qualify. You got a 12 on the ACT test. You don't qualify. Um, and that's something that I didn't know. They just told me go to school, have a 1.5 to be on the football team. And so that's what I did. And so when I realized I had an opportunity, I took advantage of it. And that's what I try to give the kids now. Um, I'm a football coach because I love it. Um, it's my passion, giving kids an opportunity to get out of certain situations by putting their hands in the dirt and working for it. Um, you know, and also from the academic standpoint, 
um, because it took me two years to get qualified into college. So, you know, I try to spread that along as well. I'm in real estate, uh, you know, on a few properties here and there. Oh, a few. <laughs> <laughs> I try to. Uh, I try residential to, or a commercial property? Uh, both. Um, but I'm a residential oh. fan, you know, because, uh, like I said, my, my, we, all, we, all I ever lived in was Section 8 property. So I'm a, I'm a residential fan. So. Okay, so being a, being um, a person that lives in Section Eight, and I show a knocking it. Look, okay. So with your properties, do you, are your properties on Section Eight, or do you only rent to other families? No, ma'am. I don't. None of my properties on Section Eight. Um, oh, you must no. have a big, big, big properties. Well, no, it's not so much that big, big, big. I, I, I start them from scratch. I build from ground up. Um, I, I try to leave the the ones um, that's been existing for a while alone. Um, I just I don't like past problems. I like new problems um, with new solutions. Uh, so uh, that's, that's a dope philosophy, bro. I like that. <laughs> man, I'm a, man, hold up. Yeah. So um, I like to stick to I don't, I like to stay away from Section 8, but, you know, um, you know, I do deal with residents um, that I try to pull out of Section 8 and kind of get them going. I'm partners with a, uh, a lot of guys in like Habitat for Humanity down there, helping put families in homes, and you know, kind of edu educate them on the credit system and so forth. So, Good stuff. Big, big stuff. Big stuff. Good stuff. So let me ask you, because we were talking about this. The guy everybody loves to hate. <laughs> what you think about this game coming up this 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 Super Bowl Sunday? Uh, Cause I'm like, you know, ever since the tough rule, you know, I hated Tom Brady. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> ever since the tough rule, me and Tom Brady had beef. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, the tough rule. Okay, real quick for those that don't know, it was a game between the Oakland Raiders and the New England Patriots. It was snowing. Brady fumbled the ball, but they said he was trying to tuck it in. <laughs> and they came up with this whole rule called the tuck rule for him because Stole the Raiders rule from his team. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the Raiders, the Raiders. If the Raiders would have won that game, they would have been going to the Super Bowl. But except for the Patriots won that game, and that started off their whole dynasty right there. Because yeah. from that point on, they were winning. So, but I hated Brady ever since then because they made up that rule just for him in that game. That rule had never been called before or anything. So, but now that this dude is going to possibly. And it's going to be a good game. I'm not counting him out. You can't count him out. Even though I like Mahomes, I like KC, you cannot count him out. And I'm like, if he do, I mean, if he wins six Super Bowls, <laughs> I mean, is, is is he the GOAT? I mean, you know. He's the GOAT. He's the GOAT, he's a good coach. I tell you, he's a go from a fan perspective and a player perspective. I played against him in New England. Well, look, when you walk, look. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Tell me about it. Look, when you play against when you play against guys like Tom, and it's only one Tom. But when you walk in the when you walk after the Star Spangled Banner and the kickoff is gone and they get the ball, it's game over. Like when if and then especially if you have wrinkles in your defense, it's game over. And playing for the Bengals, you know, no disrespect to Bengals fans all over, but you know, as many times as we went up there to New England, we never were successful. It was pretty much a blowout. But come this Sunday, you no, know, I'm look, it's kind of like you said the tuck rule. It's the Brady rule, right? So I yeah. think you know, <laughs> you know, is a go is a go in the NBA and what's his name? You yeah. know, and, they got a Jordan rule too, right? So you know, yeah. and feel you got a Brady rule. I give it to him. I um, much respect going to ten Super Bowls, even if they lose. Um, you got to give it to the guy. Man, he's what forty. Yeah. You know, we yeah. watch uh, we watch Drew Brees go out crying, and we watching Tom going out swinging, man. So uh, I'm, I'm yeah. going. Yeah. Who gonna win? Or who you got? Man. <laughs> 
say, I say this. I say this, man. I, and I don't. I, you know, I'm not a. I'm. I'm not betting. Um, man, I gotta go with Tom. You know, for one, LSU, Leonard Fournette. Um, two, you know, I, you got linebacking core from LSU. We got a lot of LSU on Tampa's team, man. You got a little bit uh, on the other squad too, man. But you know that defense, man. That boy JPP, you know, he coming off that edge still too, man. That defense rolling, man. You know, that yeah. linebacker from LSU looking like a young Ray Lewis out there, man. You know, <laughs> um, that's that's a great that's a great point. That yeah, the defense from Tampa Bay was, was showing out uh this past past well, the past Sunday or whatever, whatever the game was. Yeah. But I'm very nervous about Kansas City's uh defense when you're back there with them corners and free safeties and DBs. I'm nervous about that because sometimes they tend to let, you know, quarterbacks just pass all over them. Baker Mayfield killed them that day. They lost to uh, Kansas City, but Baker Mayfield was killing them. Yeah. And and they can't keep up with them receivers, man. So that's the only yeah. Achilles heel to me for yeah. um for Kansas City. I want to see the black dude win. I want to see Andy Reid get another uh, championship because I just know he's been coaching for a long time and he only got one, right? Or he got two. The other one's with Green Bay, right? He got Philly. two. Oh, he Philly. Right, yeah. right, right, right. He didn't win it, though, did he? Uh, they lost against New England. Yeah. No, they won. Philly yeah. beat New England. Philly beat New England. Remember, remember Nick Foles came in? No, I'm talking about, yeah. I'm talking about when T.O. When, uh, played. Oh, no, yeah, that was 04. Now, T.O. and uh, Donovan and uh, McNabb. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. You're exactly right. That was 04. They lost. Um, so, it's, it's, I think, you know, like Ashley was saying, like the best of today versus, I mean, hell, both of them kind of the best of today. You know, people leaning on Patrick because, you know, he got the swag and he throwing stuff behind his back and he finger rolling and all that stuff. But, I mean, it's going to be a great game, man. It, it, it's, I think it's going to be a high scoring game, too. I know it's going to be a big money game, man, due to Corona and all that other stuff. You ain't going to be. To me, that's the biggest game it could have been, man, because you got the last two winning Super Bowl quarterbacks playing against each other, you know. Uh -huh. um, you, got, you got the old guy versus the young guy. You know, you got old fans and these new swag fans. And, you know, yeah. I, think, I think it's great for football, you know. It'd be even better if you got if you get a quarterback by the name of Carr in there, you know, sooner or later, you know. <laughs> 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 hey, this is Big Bing's Break Room Podcast. <laughs> hanging out with Shawnee Scott, Action Jackson, our special guest, Cincinnati Bingo, Dallas Cowboy, offensive line legend Nate Livings. And speaking of the offensive line, bro, um, you what, what years did you play? I played uh from 06 to 12, 12 and 13 in Dallas. So give me your 2000s top five. Your 2000s top five. Top five D linemen or top five? Top old? five defense people, individuals. Okay. I'll, um, top five. Your, your, since you played in the 2000s, give I'll me tell you, I, I'll tell you my top five that I've ever I've ever been on the field with. That's when even you, better. That's dope. That's even doper. Um, first off, I got to go to Ray Lewis. Um, Damn. You know, first off, I got to go to Ray. Man, we a quick little two cent about Ray. Man, I was in awe when we played against him. Man, we was running thirty four power. I was the pulling guard. Ray was mugged up in the a gap. I looked at the cornerback and pointed at him just so I can throw Ray off a little bit. But Ray is so intelligent. He called it. He was like, "Power coming up the a gap." Snap the ball. Bam. Ray smoked me in the face. Look, messed the whole play up. I was like, "That's why he's Ray Lewis." Um, the second greatest play, well, not greatest play. I won't even go in that order. I've played against Peyton Manning. Um, I mean, man, watching him tear our defense apart, watching him do his thing, uh, you know, against other opponents, man, it was crazy. Um, you know, another guy that don't get no love. I, you know, I played against some really good D linemen in my career. I know a guy that don't get love, man, and I'm gonna give him some love because he deserves it. It's Geno Atkins. Um, oh. Cincinnati Bengals. I'm gonna give him love. Best D lineman I ever played against in my whole career. Um, explosive, fast, hustle, grind. Great guy off the field. Um, so uh, I got to put though Tom in there as well. Um, but yeah, man, that's you know that's pretty much my top four or five. Um, 
players that's, that's a good comp good company right there that's a yeah, good man. company right there yeah. <laughs> oh yeah so hey, uh, i know yeah everybody you named is dope that's good yeah. Yeah, I played yeah. against number one was with the Raiders, but you know that's Warren going out the dope. So I mean, hey, see, hey, one more, one more, one more Raider reference, and we gonna go to the golf course, buddy. We going straight to the golf course. Come on, yo, that's your, I got. I, I have a question. I got a question. So, what is it like playing golf with action? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, like, yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. you yeah. get it. You get a bunch of everything playing wood. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, when I was a kid, I, you know, I used to hang out with old people, not calling it action. <laughs> you know, no means. It's the wisdom part. It's the, no, no, because I got you, bro. Like, it's the wisdom part. Because, hold on, Paul. Like, here's my thing about action now. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me do this. Here's my thing about them. Um, um, he walks the course better than I do. <laughs> like he walked, nah, and it's not me pulling his leg. He walks in. He's no, he knows too. I done told him on the course before too. Like he walks the course. I mean, he can play all day if he wanted to. Two, three rounds, you know, very in shape. He inspires me. You know, we talk about the age rides a lot because he rides every year. Um, you know, and I've been pulling this leg, but not really pulling this leg. But you know, I'm from Louisiana, I got an eating problem, so I've been wanting to get on that ride. I just, you know, I see how some of them out there, you know, try to leave me two students behind, you know. Um, but you know, you know, great guy, great character. Um, I love hanging out with him, man, because he always got a nugget to drop on me. Um, you know, we fa we we uh, we fathers of volleyball daughters, we share a lot, I mean, three or two, you know, so. Um, just a great guy to be friends with, man. You know, um, just playing in the NFL, you meet a lot of people. A lot of people just want to hang out with you just because of who you are. Um, but, you know, man, when I met him, he was genuine. Um, I love his wife, love his kids, too, you know, so a uh, great guy. Did you take yeah. your kids to – did you take them? Did you take your kids to Kings Island when you was in Cincinnati? Yes, sir, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play at least twice a summer, man. That's – that's uh, equivalent to Six Flags, y'all here in Texas. Uh, they got a uh, they got a pop of those out there too, by the way. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what you yeah. have to do, Nate? You have to um, get on the bike with Action because see, Ac Action got me on the bike after I had surgery. I was out of surgery. <laughs> <laughs> you need uh, to get on this bike. It'll make you feel better. And no, I, yeah. and I went and rode with him, and he left me. So uh, <laughs> you you should try. You should do spending time. So so you say he left you. Imagine riding uh California. <laughs> <laughs> he has me signed up for California, so I'm going with him and Sherry. Yeah, but yeah, I'm gonna, gonna, I, gonna I, try, I got a plan. I got a plan. Yeah. She gonna try to make it. Got a plan. <laughs> I got a plan. Oh, I'm gonna look real good. Y'all gonna see the videos. And Bink is coming too. He he don't know he's coming yet, but he's gonna ride. I'm so I, I say you, you should you should sign up and ride too because it's not a race it's a ride and it's you ride. and you will beat me because I'm gonna be the slowest one. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna six I'm gonna keep Nate to the golf course. Me and Nate got six to the golf course. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, but, no, I'm hey. um. Go ahead. I got you. No, I was just gonna say um be, before we get out of here, Nate. You know. So, actually, on something about you writing children's books, man, and, and, and the book is currently out now, right? Can people purchase it right now? Yes, sir. It's uh, Big Boy Nate Adventures' first football road trip. It's on Amazon. You can get it at Amazon.com. Um, Big Boy Nate uh, Adventures' first football road trip. It's about me and my son. Um, we went to a football game with my little, my little brother was playing football. We went to the game um, in Abilene, Texas. My uh, my parents met us out there. You know, we had a great time and I just captured the moment, you know, and I wrote a book from it, you know. Um, and I love, I, you know, I love that, man, and um, how football brings family together, you know, and, and yeah. do the and all that stuff, man. It's just sports, you know. Um, it just brings family together. And it's also, it, you know, um, I try to share the book, too, with, with, with um, kids that they don't write children's books for you know what i'm saying um um hispanic kids you know i was at a school in texas you know and i had a kid you know 
asked me if my book was in Spanish. And I was like, mm. I was like, no, it's not. But that's a great point because yeah. they don't make children's book in, books in Spanish. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I got the, I, you know, I got God in me, man. I love everybody. I, it don't matter what you look like, man. It's about the spirit, you know. Um, so, man, peace and love to everybody. Thanks for this opportunity to come share with all of y'all and y'all oh, listen. Wait, 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 don't wrap up yet, because I, I, I know we got to wrap up. But I got. Do you have a nonprofit? Yeah, um, okay, I have. We're supposed to talk about that, and then somebody took it back to football. So okay, I got. Um, I got my nonprofit, the Nate Living's Foundation. Um, what we do is we help out with uh, low income families um, and low income neighborhoods. Um, we do, you know, we give out scholarships. We uh, we do turkey drives. We do coat drives. Um, you know, um, we sponsor a lot of different sports teams um, throughout the community um, where I'm from. Um, you know, so we try to do a lot in that area, you know, because, um, you know, um, I remember my mom used to sit in the line and wait for a Thanksgiving basket so we can have a happy Thanksgiving, you know? So mm. um, that's why, you know, I consistently try and push myself at helping families um, that grew up or grow up like I did too. So. Okay. Well, before, when we log off, please don't hang up. Cause I want to say something offline. Not gotcha. on okay. <laughs> <laughs> this guy right here. This guy right here. To go. This, yeah. Tell you, it's, it's 100%, 100% all the time. And I appreciate it, man. And love back to your family and the wife and kids. And, and I know I, I used to call him Little Nate, but I know he ain't little no more. No. I, see him. I had a chance to see him in a minute, hang out with my, my little buddy. We used to hang out at the volleyball games. But I'm like, yeah, I know he ain't little no more. He got to be he's sprouting up. No, man. No, yeah. <laughs> And, and it's a family affair on uh, Sunday, February 7th. So if you want to meet Big Nate, Lil Nate, and everybody else with the Nates, y'all come on out. <laughs> y'all come on out and see him in action and Shawnee and the whole Media Room 360 family at Top Golf. This is for our Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington listeners. If you're going to come down from Louisiana or Missouri or Oklahoma or Florida, hey, come on down. Welcome. You know what I'm saying? Where's uh, but also coming from? Uh, JP Salsa is coming from Cincinnati. Yeah, from Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah, he's coming yeah. from Cincinnati. Yeah. Cincinnati. Yeah. Oh, that's the bay that you're the captain of. You're the you're the um, captain bay for JP Salsa. Sweet. Yeah, some of the best salsa yeah. in America. We did a lot of stuff yeah. in, in Columbus, Ohio. So you, that's why that's why I was in Cincinnati all the time. Gotcha. But, gotcha. But, Shout out uh, my man Kevin. That's good. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Kirksey. <laughs> Kevin Kirksey. <laughs> our other sponsor. Kevin Kirksey. I'm gonna spank him because today I went to I had to go to Redbird Mall, which is a you know a icon mall. I grew up in that mall, and I stopped in End Zone. Shout out to Cheryl and and um, Cleotis. Guess this is in who Dallas. Product I saw in End Zone. Kevin Ooh. Kirksey. Boom! Our, our our partner, our main partner. Awesome. One of yeah, our main partners. If you want to buy some of the stuff that you've seen us in, and like that Black Pride hat that I took the picture in, they have that there for sale. So if you're in the DFW area and you you know you want to go just purchase it up front, you can go to End Zone the Redbird Mall and get it, or shop online. Hey, Kevin Kirksey dot com. Kevin Kirksey dot com. Shout out them Star Girls. Yeah, star <laughs> Girls. Media Room three hundred and sixty. We got to shout out Basil Mitchell. Um, yeah, Basil Mitchell. A, a Bay captain, too, for Media Room 360. He played for the green and yellow team and the blue. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to get up right, Nate. We're going yeah, we, right. we to get up. We're trying to help her out, Nate. We try. We try. Yeah. Any information? <laughs> oh, Vita Loka. We can't leave out Vita Loka. Oh, yeah, definitely not Vita Loka. That's my girl, Vita. Holla and at me. DJ Red, the MC, he'll be there, oh, too. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Red. Big up Red. I saw that flower, Red. That's yeah. dope. I saw the fly. And you're going to be there, too. For all information, go to actionsageride.com. Go hug somebody. Tell them you love them. Put on the mask, and we'll see you tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Nate, we appreciate you, big bro. Thank you all for having me, man. Much love to everybody. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what you doing? I be in the break room. I be in, I be in the break room. Bet I'm in the bed. I'm in the break room.
Thank you.